Time is seven o'clock. I'm officially going to call this meeting to order. So, Deb, would you kindly uh, call roll? Councillor Williams? Yes. Councillor Hansey? Here. Councillor Purser? Here. Councillor Parrish? Present. Councillor Stolarczyk? Here. And Councillor Miller? Yes. Great. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to ask everyone to join us in a stand and join us in a moment of silence, uh, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, we have an agenda before us. Are there any changes to the agenda? There are no changes to the agenda, Mr. Mayor. Right. I need a motion to adopt. I move oh. to adopt the agenda. Second. All right, we have a first and a second. Councillor Williams? Yes. Councillor Hansey? Yes. <clears throat> Councillor Purser? Yes. Councillor Parrish? Yes. Councillor Stolarczyk? Yes. Councillor Miller? Motion passes 6-0. Great, thank you. Tonight we have uh, no proclamations or presentations, so we're gonna jump into uh, public participation. Uh, this section is set aside for the city council to listen to comments by the public regarding items that do not otherwise appear on this agenda. Generally, the city council will not discuss the issues and will not take an official action under this section of the agenda. We ask that you please limit your comments to a three minute period and ask for your name and address. So is there anybody that would like to come up and speak? All right. Seeing none, I'm uh, gonna close public parse, uh, public participation and move into consent agenda. These are items where all conditions or requirements have been agreed to or met prior to the time they come before council for final action. These items will be approved by a single motion of the council members. A council, members of the council may ask that an item be removed from the consent agenda and fully discussed. All items not removed from the consent section will then be approved. A member of the council may vote no on a specific item without asking that they be removed from the consent section for full discussion. Any items that any item that is removed from the consent agenda will be placed at the end of the consent agenda. Boy, that cookies sugar is kicking in. <laughs> wow. Um, is there any uh let's open this up to public participation. Does anybody wish to participate uh or make comments on the consent agenda? All right, hearing none, close that. Council? I have a clarific cl clarification question on E, F, and G. When annexations come to us, they come to us because the property owner has requested an annexation, correct? <laughs> you need that in a microphone, please. That, that is correct, yes. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions, concerns, or comments on consent? All right. With that, would you kindly poll council? Did we, we need a motion. did I miss the oh, motion? Yeah, I need a motion. <laughs> Sugar is really not doing you good. I move to approve the consent agenda. Okay, Second. First, second. Okay. All right. Now, Deb, would you kindly poll? Councillor Hansey? Yes. Councillor Purser? Councillor Parrish? Yes. Councillor Stolarczyk? Councillor Miller? Affirmative. And Councillor Williams? Yes. Motion passes 6 0. Great. Um, we are going to move right into a legislative hearing. Uh, first up is Resolution 2024 23, public hearing, amending the 2024 budget with supplemental appropriations of funds for personal services, capital equipment, capital projects, and special projects. And our Assistant City Manager, Shannon Vassen. You've got the floor. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council for the opportunity to present. Um, the resolution before you is a supplemental uh, budget amendment for the General Fund, the Capital Projects Fund, and the Sewer Fund for a variety of different things, uh, but mostly related to, as a mayor, uh, just read out personnel services, um, capital equipment, uh, capital projects, and also a few other special projects. Um, as with any supplemental budget amendment, I do try to summarize um, the bulk of the expenses in the cover sheet, so what I have in front of you as a table kind of outlining all of the expenses and also the source of funds for each of the expense as well. Um, if council remembers, when we went through the budget process last year, um, we had requested to add an additional police officer um, throughout the budget process. But as our leadership team met and we recommended a budget to our city manager and subsequently to the city council, we decided to hold off on that until we were fully staffed um, in our uh, police department and we were able to hire uh, some as well because we had a lot of vacancies uh, in the prior year. It was due to uh, miscellaneous reasons, going to other organizations, but also retirements, things like that. Uh, so we did tell the council, you know, when we did find someone who we thought was qualified and would be a good fit for the Fruit of Police Department, we'd bring back a supplemental uh, to you in order to hire that person in order to beef up kind of our public safety staffing. Uh, we have someone that's in the pipeline right now. I think it's going very well as far as recruitment. So our police chief and our police lieutenant has asked that so we put this before you. So the 27,000 you see there is just to hire the new police officer for the remainder of the year. And then next year, um, that position will be included in the 2025 budget uh, subject to council approval. Uh, that 27,000 includes salary, benefits, um, you know, payroll taxes that we pay, et cetera. Um, we also, speaking of our public safety department, we have to replace a number of vehicles this year and in the upcoming years. Unfortunately, we've had two that were totaled this year, um, one that's in pretty bad shape that we're trying to repair as well. Um, but we did get our hands on one police interceptor right now that's over in Greeley. So um, using some insurance funds that we received from two accidents earlier this year and some funds that are restricted for public safety, we'd like to be able to purchase that interceptor because they are very, very difficult uh, to obtain. We actually um, ordered two last year and we carried it forward to this year and we hope that we'll get those two in November of 2025. That's how difficult it is to get some of these police interceptors. So very excited we're able to find this one. The only caveat is that it came in black instead of white, but that's all good. We'll take what we can get. Uh, Fruit of Parks and Rec Department received uh, $10,000 in scholarships fund from the Youth Scholarship Tournament that they used to um, fund a bicycle helmet program in partnership with Family Health West and also to fund the Hot 90 Days of Summer, which was a giveaway to local youth in the community for FCC passes this summer. And then we have two um, pretty large budget amendments. One um, regarding the 16 road rail crossing. As this group knows, this has been in the budget every year since I believe 2021. Um, anytime you deal with the railroad, some things kind of take a while. So when we initially approved the budget, um, we were using, you know, 2021 costs and also um, trying to estimate what it would look like. But uh, we the railroad has completed their work. We actually went out to bid. We got um, uh, bids back um, from firms and we decided to move forward with United. United uh, companies, they um, did provide us a pretty pretty good bid, but it did come about $150,000 over the initial budget cost. We kind of um, attribute that to inflation, but also it's been several years since we initially budgeted um, uh, the project as well. The last item uh, in the supplemental uh, budget amendment is $710,000 in appropriations for the sewer fund for the 19 road um, improvement project. Um, the budget has an increase for 19 road, but rather now that we have bids in hand, contracts have been signed, um, we're kind of cleaning up the funds that are appropriated for use. Um, so that 710,000 is what we um, will uh, uh, contribute to the sewer fund and that will be recaptured through increased plan investment fees from development that build out along 19 road. We've done it a few ways in the past. We've had the developers expand the line and they pay for it or we expand the line and then we recapture it one way or another. So that 710,000 will offset our general fund appropriation for the project and that will be just for sewer. Um, always happy to take any questions after public comment and that concludes my presentation. Thank you. I'd like to open up to the public for public comment question. Please come up and once again, for the record, please state your name and address. Do I need my address, name and address? 
Yes. Tessa Bynum, 255 North Ash Street. Um, I just have a clarifying question um, for the 710,000. Um, is that the money has already been a, like accounted for? Okay, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, anybody else? Getting off easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Okay, I've only got one. You go first. Okay. They're mostly really easy. But um, the cruiser got totaled. What what was the story with that one? Oh, geez, there were a couple. Um, one was in Grand Junction. So the police officer was uh, just got done dropping off someone at the youth correctional facility. And I think that um, the other driver just completely missed a stoplight, ran into the police car and told it. I think there was pretty, pretty bad accident. <laughs> um, I cannot remember the first one. We can double check and get back to you. Um, but yeah, two have been told and there was another accident which wasn't um, as severe, but yeah, unfortunately we have to toll out two of those cruisers. Oh, the other one was a detective car where I believe we were at fault for that. So are we upside down now? Like we're gonna get one, so we're still upside down one. Yeah, yeah, and we're gonna, um, we do have the two on order for next year. And then as we're working on the 2025 budget now, um, we will have two to three included in next year's budget just so we can order those and kind of um, uh, uh, get those included. For the detective vehicles, we did try something new just cause we couldn't get the SUVs. So we actually gave them, we just bought, you know, smaller SUVs off the lot here in Grand Junction. Um, and then we they, um, rolled in their interceptors and kind of the uh, pool of the police interceptors. So one of those was not an interceptor. So we'll probably just replace that with something similar. I think it was like a Chevy Traverse um, that got totaled in that one. Yeah. And then if I could address Tessa's question. Um, yeah, so this does not change the budget. Um, we did our budget still roughly with right away acquisition about $7 million, but that's $500,000 of contingency funds or the force account. Um, and then the rest being, you know, construction and some other materials that we've bought. So when we went out to bid, we got a very favorable bid from MA Concrete, who's done a lot of work for us. They actually did the 19 road expansion back in 2019 after we had to get a second contractor. And uh, yeah, that came back at 5.2 with the contingency accounts of 5.7. So with that, and then some of the other equipment that we paid for ahead of time to decrease the costs, um, we got kind of exactly where we were thinking as far as budget right around six, but we did increase our acquisition costs, our land acquisition costs. I think another another way to put it is we we have the full project budgeted, but uh, there is a portion of that project that is sewer expenses, and so that has to come out of our sewer fund. So that increases the sewer fund going to the project, and the same amount decreases in the general fund. Uh, just to have, but we had to see where everything was going to land to be able to know exactly which which portions would come out of the line items would be towards the, out of the sewer fund. So it's just a change in two funds yeah. for the same and, amount. And uh, we'll de-obligate those funds at the budget process or we can do it sooner if council requests it, whatever you prefer. And then Mary Elizabeth, our city attorney is drafting an amendment to the current recapture agreement. So there's already a recapture agreement for the sewer that was brought to the South portion or to where iron will is. And so the new subdivision across, and they participated uh, financially in that, bringing the sewer to that uh, spot. And then the subdivision across on the east side of 19 Road, each of those houses is paying not only the sewer, uh, the normal tap fee to, to uh, connect to sewer, but they're paying an additional recapture fee for the sewer that was brought there. So we will amend that to include, and that'll come to you in a, at a future meeting, to include this new section once we construct the section of sewer, all the, the two subdivisions that'll be going in in the future will pay a recapture uh, to that. And the recapture fees go back into the sewer fund. Getting ahead of infrastructure, I like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, appreciate that clarification. Um, because that's where I was trying to go. I, it'd be great to probably just see that decrease in the in the budget sooner yeah. than later, just to get her done. Absolutely. Uh, um, did you have? You, you had I a... just wanted to piggyback off of Aaron's because that I was going to ask about the police cruiser as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, I maybe I'm totally crazy. Do we get insurance payout? We do. Yeah. Yeah. So if you 
Yeah, so we did get um, an insurance award for both ones. So we just had to pay deductible, although we are in the process of getting our deductible back um, for one of them as well. So yeah, I think I could open up the resolution that has the exact number. Let me do that. Uh, it looks like it was insurance was 42250 oh, and then 1850 okay. uh, the rest, yeah. the and the insurance covers the interceptor it's the outfitting which is the additional 18 so between the two payments yeah the suv is covered but then we gotta outfit it so, so we're combining both insurance claims yeah. for the interceptor yep yeah that was the clarification i was looking for yeah thank you um let's see the parks and rec thing so that's a cost to us, right? What was that not in the budget for 24? Uh, so it sounds like it's, I'm, I guess I'm just confused because it sounds like we do this often and we're um, amending the budget, which why is it not in the budget? Yes, yeah, so they do have some funds for scholarship. This one kind of went above and beyond because they receive funds throughout the year um, to give back um, to the local community. So this was funds from the youth uh, golf tournament, which we get the funds for. So if they receive ever an excess of that, they just put it right back in this the community is through these funds rooms. raised. The bucket for yep. us, and we're just appropriately yep. increasing the the utilization of yep. it. Yep, Perfect. yep, perfect. Um, last question that I had was, um, how much was the original budget for that railroad crossing on 16 road? Oh, geez, 350. And it's coming in at five. So the railroad has completed all of their work. So if you've driven on it recently, you've seen that they've expanded it. So now that's the into, matter. That's just yeah. go. That's 16 road. That's going into the industrial park, yep, right? Yep. The yep. crossing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Big jump right now. Yeah. Yep. So when we put that in there, yeah, it was 2021. We just got the um, the Mesa County Federal Mineral Lease uh, Grant as well. So we've been rolling that forward each year. Um, so we were waiting on the railroad to complete their work. Um, that took several years. They finally just got it done earlier this year. So we went out to bid to expand that road to match the intersection. But yeah, it did come over uh, the budget. But we do have some grant funds. And then we were using transportation impact fee dollars as well. That's okay. I guess, and it, I'm not saying it's, it's us, it's just a comment of, yeah. like, I don't know, I get sick and tired of seeing these. Well, we're well under, but or well over budget. And so we've got, we didn't budget enough. So we got to, so we're talking, what is that? Almost a third over right. budget. And it's right. like, and it, this is not the first time nor the last, but it's just frustrating to see that we put all this hard work into things. And it's, and we pay, sometimes we pay people right. to go help us find a budget. And it's, I'm like that's garbage. <laughs> so just a general comment that it's like it's like really the railroad the railroad situation is unique because when you do any project that's a project that we were doing but you have to rely on the railroad. So the railroad when we received the the grant from the Federal Mineral Lease District they were aware that it was with the railroad so they anticipated cuz typically they want to let you roll a, a grant that many years forward. And the unfortunate part is waiting on their timing during this time of high inflation was that the, even their cost. So they do the, they contract that work out, but we pay for it. And that price just kept going up and up and up each year. So that was a big portion of it. And then by the time we're at the end, when we have to pay for the paving to meet, because right now when you go over at the, there's a big bump on both sides because it's the road is not, doesn't meet the new improvements and, um, so it's, yeah, I totally agree. It's, it's unfortunate kind of, but definitely one of those that's uh, out of our control from the time you originally budget it until you actually go to bid. I mean, was it three, four years later, Shannon? I mean, yeah. three years. So yeah, we've had what 20.3%, whatever it is, inflation over that period of yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. But no, it, but I'll throw this in and then I'll be done is, but at least like 19 road where things are going good on that budget. So Hopefully we can keep it that way because that's yeah. a big one. Yeah, yeah. And we were, um, I can't remember if this was reports and actions, but we do have some savings from other projects that will help offset this. So the overlays came in $80,000 under budget. Um, the chip ceiling came in way over. So we just decided not to do that this year. I think everyone's busy due to the other projects and also uh, contractors that we would normally use are very busy as well. So those between the overlays and the chip seal, that's about $300,000 that we're not spending this year because we got a better rate on the overlays and the chip seal is just too gotcha. cost prohibitive. Yeah. So oh, that's great. Appreciate it. Thank you. Of course. Yeah. Why have there? It's great questions. Any other? Questions, comments, concerns. All right. Thank you. We looking for a motion. I move adopt 
amending the 2024 budget with supplemental appropriations of funds in the general capital projects fund and the sewer fund for personnel services, capital equipment, capital projects, and special projects. Second. All right, we have a first and a second. Any additional questions or comments? Would you kindly poll council? Councilor Purser? Yes. Councilor Parrish? Councilor Stolarczyk? Yes. Councilor Miller? Affirmative. Councilor Williams? Yes. Councilor Hansi? Yes. Motion passes 6 0. Thank you. All right, we're going to go to our second and final uh, item on the legislative hearing Ordinance 2024 1 3, second reading, an ordinance am uh, amending Chapter 5.20 of the Fruta Municipal Code to allow administrative approvals for certain liquor related applications. Uh, City Clerk Deb Woods is here to present. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, uh, City Council. I'm presenting the second reading of ordinance 2024-13, um, which the purpose of is to allow for administrative approvals of certain liquor license applications, which are all listed in the ordinance itself. Essentially, all applications for a new liquor license will uh, still go to the city council for approval, while the rest will be approved administratively, including special events. There is a provision in the ordinance that if there is any derogatory information regarding a licensee, if there have been any violations of the Colorado Liquor or Beer Codes, or if Chief Krause has any concerns about a special event liquor permit application, those will not be administratively approved and will be placed on a council agenda for the council to consider and make a decision. As the licensing officer, the initial process for applications will not change. I will still contact the Fruita Police Department and any other applicable law enforcement agencies to request criminal history records of applicants or inquire as to whether a fruit licensee has had any violations of the Colorado Liquor or Beer Codes. I will also continue to send all special event liquor permit applications to Chief Krause, requesting that he review them and provide me with his memorandum regarding whether or not he has any concerns. Additionally, when a licensee is cited for a liquor or beer code violation by the Colorado Liquor Enforcement Division, the division emails me a copy of the proposed stipulation agreement and order that is sent to the licensee. If I receive one of those for a fruit licensee or if there is any question at all as to whether an application should or should not be administratively approved, that application will be brought before council at the, ne at the next meeting for consideration. Staff respectfully requests that the council adopt ordinance 2024-13 and that concludes my presentation, but I'm happy to answer any questions after you open the public hearing. All right, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to open it up to the public. Does anybody have any questions or comments on resolution or ordinance 2024-13? All right, seeing none, we're gonna close that and bring it back to council. Glad to have it then. Yeah, yeah. be good. All right. I move to approve ordinance 2024-13, second reading and ordinance amending chapter 20 or chapter 520 of uh, the Fruit of Municipal Code to allow administrative approvals for certain liquor-related applications. Second. All right, we have a first and a second. Any other questions or comments? All right, hearing none, would you kindly poll council? Councillor Parrish? Yes. Councillor Stolarczyk? Yes. Councillor Miller? Yes. Councillor Williams? Yes. Councillor Hansey? Yes. And Councillor Purser? Indeed. Motion passes 6 0. All right, we had an indeed on that one. All right. Uh, <laughs> like that. Some legislative hearings. Uh, and I think we're just going to we go to city manager's report. All right. Thank you. We're up. Thank you, Mayor, members of council. Just a few items tonight. One is a reminder and just a highlight of an, an invite that we will put on the count or we'll put on the calendar for the council to be invited to tour the Van Winkle Ranch and that to learn about the Agri West uh, program that Janie Van Winkle is working on with the Business Incubator Center. That is August 20th from 11 to 1, and uh, we've sent a meeting planner to you all for that, and we'll make sure that's posted. And then we can also uh, carpool from here if needed. Uh, I know staff do have to be, we do have to be back for a two o'clock that day. So we, we plan on this being about 11 to one, but she can make it longer if those want to stay is what she said. And then 
just want to make sure you're aware that tomorrow construction starts on the ADA accessible ramp on the north side of this building. So there, during that construction, there will be just a one-way drive-through on the, on the north side. The parking spaces will be uh, will not be accessible except for the two electric charging stations. So those will be uh, accessible uh, during this construction. I think they anticipated timeline. Chris, do you remember that? We're always nervous on those timelines, but it's about, um, it, this isn't a terribly long project, but it'll be helpful for the building to have, um, uh, trying to get this is up to current standards uh, where we only have the ramp on the south side and that affects closures during certain events and things like that. And then- Question for you, Mike. Yeah. Uh, we're moving the drop box, is that, and you're saying you're moving over by the election box, is that gonna just stay there permanently after this? I, I don't think so. I think it's coming back. It's just during the construction. Yeah. Uh, and then the just want to give you a heads up that at the workshop this month, you have uh, th two main items, which are the discussion for a few code changes with the uh, or discussing those changes with the municipal court judge and the chief of police and myself. And then also uh, we have the capital improvement plan overview, which will take a bulk of the bulk of the time that night. Uh, and, and then we have one item that we're adding and it'll be pretty short, but the parks and rec advisory board, uh, or that, sorry, the arts and culture board will present, uh, give you an overview of the, the murals and what they've selected. They, they haven't selected yet, but the, uh, the murals for the Mulberry Plaza. So they will be going through a selection process. The RFP has already been out and closed. And so they will be meeting in the near future, I believe tomorrow night to start that selection process. And I know that's one the council had directed them to proceed with this year and, and we budgeted for. Uh, so that'll, but they'll give you a heads up on which one, which uh, murals are coming for that project. So uh, those are the three items coming up on the workshop and that's, uh, oh, the one other thing we had is the Fruit of Tourism Advisory Council uh, did, uh, per your direction, or after they gave an update to you all and, and direction back, they did uh, make a decision to uh, proceed with going out to bid for new, for, for the contracted services that we utilize in our, in our marketing. So they will be starting that, that process in the near future. And making a recommendation to council for a new contract at, at that point in time. I have a couple of questions. Um, do you know how late we can RSVP for the tour with Jane? I don't. I I think right up until there, there, there's we can we can definitely. Yeah, I don't think there's a deadline. Um, I was just curious, and I'm sure it's probably on the link about what's coming up, but I, in my mind, I thought we were having a discussion on the localism um, board in August workshop also, but is that somewhere else, some time settled? We are just awaiting council's direction at when we are discussing that one, so. We'll yeah. get to that today, then. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions for Mike? Anything else, Mike? That's it. Thank That's you. It. All right. All right. Uh, council reports and actions. Who would like to start off so I'm not picking at random? I'll go first. Okay. Because um, I have a guest. <laughs> um, for historical preservation, Chris, if you want to, yeah, come. This is just going to give us a soup, give you guys a super quick update on our plaques because it's pretty exciting. Things are moving quickly. Thank you for the, the opportunity um, to do this and, and come today. Um, Henry, were you going to put up on there? They're right here. Okay, good, 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 good. Um, so we were going to try to get on the uh, workshop agenda, but it's full. So we squeezed this in last minute here, but um, things are coming together really quickly on our historic plaques for buildings that are on our local register. And uh, this is a good opportunity for the Historic Preservation Board to formally present that to you guys because the city has four properties essentially that are going to be recognized by plaques. And so uh, letters pertaining to the participation of the plaque installation are in your inbox 
for someone <laughs> out there. <laughs> but um, those would be 320, 325 East Aspen, this building right here, of course. Um, 432 East Aspen. Um, 17 and a half road in the, in the, the old Fruita Bridge is the other one. And then Circle Park are all um, properties that are on our local historic register. And so we are replacing all the current historic plaques that talk about these buildings up and down Main Street with brand new plaques that give a little bit more information than the current ones do. Uh, and as you guys can see, those are the examples. We're working with your sign company to do that. And they are currently, I believe, manufacturing those right now. And we are doing it uh, very similar to, um, I guess the best example would be some of the signage that the city already purchases for parks, the, the, the polycarbonate with the UV protected. Uh, so they're not metal um, because they're, that's too expensive. Um, but these are the same kind of plaques that even the Museum of Western Colorado puts on the side of the building and, and they're meant to be outside and withstand. So they should be fine for um, many, many years. Um, and we have mailed out letters to all the property owners for consent to have a, a plaque installed on their building. And so we've received four back to date, um, which includes um, an easy one, Stephen Denise's uh, house. And so that'll be a fun one to do, but we plan to uh, do some kind of press release stuff as well as celebrate it. But our ultimate goal is to have, if possible, the four plaques of the city properties installed by Fall Festival so that we can celebrate it during that event. So um, yeah, that's, I guess, kind of the- That's the urgency. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, but there, the, the process, uh, once the ball started rolling, it, it went quick. So here we are. <laughs> how many? So how many properties have the placards on homes? So right right now, um, no no homes have current plaques on them. Oh, I thought but, we had some. But we intend to, uh, as you can see, we have two different styles there. We intend to have a specific style for homes, and that is going to take a little bit more coordination for installation because we want to be, you know, cognizant of what homeowners want for people to approach their their house. And so we might have to install those slightly different than we intend to install the downtown business plaques, which can go right on the facades as we work with the business owners to do that. Um, but to, to, to your point, we do have residences on the local register and we have never plaqued those, but we want to now. So we'll be working towards that. Um, our initial purchase run of plaques is going to be 20 plaques, which two of those are residences um, because we had a recent ad um, with Michelle Cool's house a couple of years ago during COVID and we never got to do anything about it. And then with Steve and Denise's house um, being really near completion, um, there's an opportunity there. So every other plaque will be the, they're six by nine inches um, and the plaque with more information on it is the downtown business plaque. So the that's for oval is more of a home. That's correct. Yep. Yep. Correct. I love it. Um, and when you say replace the current, the ones with the pictures in the description, no, just oh, the ones no. that are on if, the building. If you've missed them, um, I don't blame you. They're old. <laughs> <laughs> They're, and some of them are completely missing. Yeah, there's okay. not even there. <laughs> if, you, if you look next to um, Rima's, there's a little rectangle on the wall that you can barely read that just says City of Fruta with the old letterhead kind of symbol on it, and it gives no information. And those were made out of um, some, they were donated essentially out of countertop material. Um, I think maybe Bennett Boschenstein was behind that at the, at the time. But anyway, um, half or more are gone. And so people just don't know that these buildings are on our local registry, which also coincides with our walking tour, our historic walking tour. Yeah, so we just wanted to introduce that. Thank you very much. Yeah. They look awesome. Working on a lot of other yeah. things too. So we just feel like giving you guys that update is is worth it. And um, Great. yeah. Thank, okay. you. Thank you. Thanks for coming, Thank Chris. I Thanks. appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah. So that was, that's my, that's my update. <laughs> <laughs> Way to form it out. <laughs> I did have um, quick meetups with four citizens that reached out um all of them were very pleasant and very engaging not anything uh you know too too uh crazy but um really awesome conversations and i love that we're kind of seeing more of that engagement okay yeah
Is there a theme to them or just kind of? Um, two of them around growth. One um, a little bit more just wants to get a little bit more engaged with the city and the people who are <laughs> in these seats. So um, yeah, so it's all good things. Yeah. And the, and the growth ones were uh, more just like uh, things that they didn't realize and wanted clarification on and how the process, like the annexation process works. And, but that's, you know, I geek out over that. So it was really fun to have those conversations. Subject matter expert, not geek. <laughs> oh, I I will own my geek uh, proudly <laughs> where it's warranted. <laughs> it's warranted there. Anything else? Nope, that's it. Who would like to go next? I will be quick. Mm. Okay. Sorry, because I didn't have any. I missed the one meeting that was held while I was on vacation, but apparently that committee uh, decided to go out for bid for agency to do the stuff that we aren't doing. So that's great. He did it in without me. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Andrea. Um, all right, so I attended the Dinos on the Rocks fundraiser, which was in support of Museums of Western Colorado, and it was a success. There were um, 98 attendees. It was at the Dinosaur Museum, and um, the net profit was $5,671, and a verbal commitment for a man who wants to donate toward the replacement of the Dilophosaurus, which is really cool. Um, yeah, it was a smash hit, and it was a, a really good time, too. Everybody had a good time. Um, I received a call from someone who expressed concern, uh, a citizen who expressed concern about the lack of lifting toilet seats in the new restrooms and uh, had concerns that certain people that are smaller would be at risk of falling in. And I told him I would, I would bring that up at the council meeting. I heard that. Um, Did you? From someone who was visiting. Okay, really? Same thing. <laughs> he had expressed concern about his wife and and then two other little girls that I guess he was at the Thursday night concert. And so I just told him I would um, try to understand more about the design and if that's something. Like modification. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I also received an email from a citizen who expressed concern about XL Power lines and i want to toss the football to mike because i think he reached out to you too yeah and i'm not I'm assuming I feel like i know enough to respond but i'd love to learn more also thank yeah you. so this pro this process has been going on for many months even before the election and so there were a number of excel held neighborhood meetings in the kind of the kingsview area there are high voltage lines these are not your typical neighborhood lines. So these are going from into Utah, I believe, um, through Colorado. And they had proposed multiple locations and have been going through a process. So they had these neighborhood meetings that it turned out where they didn't end up going through Kingsview. And then they couldn't go through the conservation easement, which is the upper part near Snooks Bottom entry and that part of the disc golf course. The final, after numerous different iterations that Excel looked look, looked at, they submitted an application to the city that's in the process right now, already uh, post, or posted for public hearing with the, the Planning Commission for a conditional use permit. And there are currently in their proposal, there are three, three of the power poles that go through a portion of the lower part of the disc golf course. And so the city had provided comments to them that we'd like to see those buried through that period. And so we had a meeting just today, actually burying those high voltage lines is not, not a, an actual option that they uh, have without a, a huge partner in funding. And it's a big disruption to the ground. So um, because they're high voltage and not your typical lines, uh, there's much more technical uh, jargon with all of that, that that they were explaining. But so they are looking at some alternative routes. We are looking at some alternative routes and we're also and, and just trying to to work through that. But there are not many options in getting through the area 
because you have to avoid the there's a vegetation area right at the end at the bottom of the the kind of the cliff on the north side of the road going to snooks bottom and that puts it close to some residents uh, as well looking out their their back windows and there's also raptors and other wildlife issues with that that they ran into and then uh, again they can't go south uh, don't necessarily want it along right along the river uh, and there's other reasons for that as well. These are like 80 on average, 80 to 85 feet high. So these are, these are pretty tall, you know, up there, but we're trying to work out. I mean, we, we obviously are not interested in it going right through an open space, uh, and a park. So, um, I don't know if they're going to, they have to make a decision if they're going to still have the hearing or continue the hearing or withdraw and reapply, but um, we're trying to work, we're trying to find a solution with Excel. So um, because ex because that hearing was posted and because there's been months and months of different iterations of this and neighborhood meetings, again, these were, neighborhood meetings were quite some time ago um, when they, when Excel held those, but it's a conditional use permit going through the process right now and in the review, so. And that's the res and the response we had let we we had a couple emails from people um one person who represents uh, a disc golf association and let them know that we had put that comment in that doesn't mean that that makes makes it happen you know but we are trying to we're again we just had a meeting today and left that meeting with some homework on both sides of trying to find some kind of solution, but it's, there's very limited solutions is, is all I'm saying from trying to get through that area. What was the response from the neighbors, neighborhoods? Um, that was to avoid the neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, for Kingsview for sure. Yeah. Which they did do. That was one of their proposed, they've had multiple routes proposed. So this is, this is not the first proposed route they had but this is the one they actually submitted through and in the official process and how can if someone has concerns how can they where should they show up how can they participate they can they can send emails the public notice um on the website for the planning commission it's a public hearing uh tuesday night at 6 30 this coming to a week from tonight thank you so question on that. So of our franchise fee, what 3% and 1% is for undergrounding? That money can't be used. Like where does that undergrounding funding go? That's for within the city for normal lines. And uh, we've used that for projects when we've done some of the, uh, when we've done a good example would be one of the alleyway projects uh, just uh, across the street that that was taking existing overhead lines and undergrounding it and using those funds uh, new construction new development is underground in residential areas but sometimes when you're doing road repairs within the city this would be so much more in cost than any of that would ever come close to touching so is it so because I, you know, I don't think we have visibility to what that fund balance is for undergrounding and how it gets spent. Do we? We do. We it's it's upon request. So whenever we have a project, uh, we but it's not building up. I mean, it's usually paying back a project that we've done. So, typically, after a, a major project has been done, yeah. And the fourth thing on my list is that I need to disclose to you all that I did go, I mean, I did um, submit a proposal for the Mulberry Mules, and I did not have anything to do with this project on the front end. I will recuse myself from every meeting and act of voting in the entire process, and I really believe that the best artists will be chosen, <laughs> and I just want to say that I'm very excited about it, but also I have had zero participation in it except for to be a bidder, and I will continue that so that this is as clean and and ethical and lovely as it should be. And I, and it's amazing. It's an amazing project. So just wanted to let you all know that. Thank you. Yes. Anything else? That's all. That was a that was pretty good. That was a four pack. Can <laughs> <laughs> you a little better? Give yeah. some momentum. <laughs> James, why don't we just start down with you? Um, I did have 
finally had a police commission I meeting a few weeks back. It was really short. It was it was basically just meeting um, the people that were on it. Um, we had talked about, I guess the the it's still the elephant in the room is the um, animal control thing, and uh, that's going to start being discussed uh, at our next workshop. Okay. Yeah. Is that? Sorry. Animal control. Yeah, no, I didn't think that, that wasn't. Yeah, no, but they're they're still trying to figure that out, and they don't. They're just not getting any answers really, and they're just kind of. This is the county. Yeah, county yeah. County so like yeah, sounds like that's budget. that's definitely heavy on Chief's mind. Um, we were really only there for a really short period of time. There wasn't much other than that um, that was talked about. Um, I think that there was. It was brought up that maybe we could have like a citizens kind of uh, analysis for lack of a better word for the police thing. And one of the guys brought that up that that was something that we wondered there could be like a um, grading or something. And it was kind of an idea and it was like, do we need to do this? And then we we're like, well, how many complaints is there really yearly for the fruit of police department? It's like four. So that was kind of not, really didn't gain any legs but other than that it was just kind of hang out and meet each other and worried about the pets and that's that's all i'd have i did not get with you in the near very near future talk about the seat. yeah sure <laughs> <laughs> that's that one uh three things um have we made any progress or any updates from the challenges that we've had with 19 road uh acquisition challenge that we've had yeah yeah the uh, staff and our right-of-way agent are just continuing to work with all those property owners and uh for whatever width is needed and ad addressing if there's so, so for example sometimes if a width is going to cause an irrigation change, then we have to also build in not just the the cost of of that width but actually how to redirect and we pay for that that fix so they they are working uh through those and then now what the one in, is it the one issue that's have we had any updates from that or is that just good um two kind of just general observation or conversations that i've had um and I, i'll probably bring more of it up at our, our retreat but one is i know there's a gentleman that is part of an investment group that wants to in, invest in, in Fruta and um, is looking for if there's any businesses that uh, need some support. Um, who's who's probably the best for them to go talk to if there's any kind of like the, just give them a helping hand to get a start? Uh, the incubator, yeah. Or yeah, I would say the chamber, but also the business incubators who most businesses go to if they need financial support. And that's who we contract. It might, and it might be just, it's also buyout just buy the business all outright. I think the individual wants to see, you know, I think like many of the conversations we've had is that we want to see good business development in our community. We want to have good employers with good paying jobs. And he just wants to be part of that solution. Um, so it's he and, and a couple other folks have come together and have some funds that they want to invest. And so he's just, he's trying to reach out where he can. And, um, but no, those are great ideas. Um, the other one is I was made aware that we are losing a professional firm out of our community that's moved to junction because the rent is very expensive and there wasn't an option to, they weren't able to settle with the landlord. So it's just, just another story. I think we've got, are we up to a death now of companies that have left our community because of rents and, and things like that. And it's just, so it's just a more of an observation, but it's a, it's a firm that has, Oh, I think there's 10 plus employees. I actually had a conversation with that firm. So did I, yeah. It was for expansion is what it was. It was not, not, not for, wasn't for rent. rent. They were out of space. They had principals doubling up in office. Right. And they could not find space here space in town. Space doesn't exist. So gotcha. Oh, that's it good. It wasn't clear. a rent issue. The, the yeah, the, the cost issue was constructing a new building. So they wanted to continue to lease and they have people rotating because they can't fit everybody and they need to expand. So they are, uh, the, and there's, I mean, there's not larger office space available, you know, in buildings to rent. So 
um, from what the owner told me, they were they needed that expansion, and so they're they're going to Grand Junction where the Colorado Christian Academy was for that larger space. So just to that have got more to the story, um, but it's mean, just sad to see that happen. So I think that's part of some items that I'll bring up and I hope maybe other people bring up the retreat, but just wanted to share that. That's all. So quick tangent. What's interesting is a real estate uh, agent called me and I did not want to get any details, but he had a client looking to do some expansion in Fruta and wanted to know who the larger employers were. So I put him in touch with the chamber uh, to have those conversations. Interesting that there's a lot of different groups starting to look around. Um, I was going to bring up the Excel issue, so I'm glad we got that covered and got good answers for that. Um, also, well, just since I guess maybe we need to chat about the localism board, I, it was my understanding when we talked to the Livability Commission and they were in full support of having a separate board um, for the communication pieces and all the things that we've talked about. Um, for the localism that we were then going to go back to um, starting to look at that more closely again. So, And we did have a workshop after that where there was some discussion, but we didn't get any specific direction yet that I... I it. <laughs> so do we want to put it on... I mean, this month is pretty packed. Um, we're in July. Um, so uh, when's our next workshop? Uh, I mean, we do have the August uh, with the three items I mentioned, and then September would be the one after that. So, I mean, we could try and think the the first discussion probably be 30 to 40 minutes. The capital improvement plan could go a couple hours. Um, so I just I, I think we could have to push it back until. Yeah, I apologize if we if we were supposed to have it on the August side. Um, I think you all have the tentative meeting list with everything coming, so we haven't had it plugged in. But what what I see on the list for workshop September is the chamber MOU and then the blocking alley access on North Mulberry. So there's okay that could the, be the, the there's one more and it's there. the budget uh, overview because that's. It's just not, a, yeah, every every year, September workshop, we by our charter, we have to go over the budget. I think we can make that work. Um, especially, I think, if we do some more work on the MOU, I think that will shorten that discussion. Right, right. Okay. It might be nice to have a summary, because it's been a little bit since we've talked about localism. It might be good to have a, a, a decent overview or summary of where we've been. So we can expedite the conversation. We don't I think have the start. conversation should not be free form. I think it should, we should come in with a structured kind of, here's kind of what was discussed and here's what the decisions go, no go kind of decisions need to be. To well, help it might be nice to have it. a summary of what we've done before. Yeah. And I, I do appreciate you wanting to go, how we want to go. It'd also forward. be nice if there was kind of a specific idea of what they actually want to do. Cause it seemed like there's just these like ideas and it sounded grand and it sounded awesome, but there wasn't really anything concrete. We're not coming down to something no. to even and it, it, comprehend. It would be nice to have some concrete. Yes. I feel confident that we can get a more concrete. Okay. Right. Okay. And that will help. Thank you. So I'll add that to September. Anything else? No, nothing else. Yeah. Um, did the community, what was it called, breakfast at Timberline last week? Uh, those are always kind of fun. This time didn't have to talk about TMDL. <laughs> so it was even that much more enjoyable. Um, a lot of questions about uh, District 51 and with the school were kind of the main questions we're getting. And it's, it's about growth, understandably. Um, just to make sure. Or we don't get into a pickle. Anybody else going to the Grand Valley Power uh, board meeting and dinner on Thursday? No. Enjoy right. that. <laughs> so I guess we don't have to worry about multiples <laughs> of us showing up. Okay. Uh, and then the only other thing is, uh, and I know uh, staff mm -hmm. saw it, I've received a number of uh, different letters lately about weeds. Um, and I know you guys have got copies of that. Yeah, fortunately, Mayor, the the one 
the, the main one you received didn't have locations, but they followed up with staff with all the locations and they've all been taken care of. Okay, great. Yes. Um, At least for that letter. <laughs> so this one has the locations? Yes. Yes. That, got that, that one. Yeah. And Matt has, Matt has visited all of those. Wonderful. And there were a number of hardships uh, at most of those locations, but it's, it's, I believe they've all been remedied actually already. So and I apologize if I did not share it with you. I received one last week from Anonymous from Grand Junction that had two specific addresses as well. Okay. I will, it's my fault for not forwarding that. I'll get you that information. So I apologize. Yeah. Also, I forgot to mention that not only did they take care of those, but they've also gone proactively around all the school routes before, because school's starting, mm -hmm. just making sure that there's no visible impairments from vegetation at any of those on the main routes. So they got those taken care of as well. And the last one on weeds, uh, James, you brought this up last meeting. Were you able, was there a conversation with District 51? What? Oh, uh, in terms of maintaining yes. the facility? Yes, uh, the planning development department reached out and had that discussion with them. They um, committed that they will continue. And we also said, well, we, you know, here's what the standards are and we will stay on that. So thank you once again for that one. And thank you for your team for all the follow up on that. Greatly, greatly appreciated. All right. Uh, anybody else have anything for council reports? Just wanted to say, I, I would like to follow up with the gentleman that called about the modification of the restroom. Is that possible? Is that something that could? Yeah, I'll need to get more. I, I don't quite understand what, what the request is, but I can get more information and then we can get Mark to contact that person and get work that out. C is just one C. There's not a lid. There's not a whatever. So like, and it's wider. Yeah, it's one size. Gotcha. If you have a little booty, you might fall in. Yeah. Okay. It's also a self-cleaning seat. So I don't think there's a lot of, Yeah. but we can check on that. It's like an adapter or something, that, uh, like an insert that they might have. Yeah, yeah. We can, we can definitely check on that if we could okay. look into it that makes sense so i can have something to that we let them know that i brought it and what's interesting is i was in palisade and noticed that they had a similar bathroom that's mm -hmm. a single unit that uh we have yeah, it's the same company and they now recognize the manufacturer yeah. i had a friend come in for the concert on thursday and the first thing he said he just got back from europe and he said they're everywhere that was the first thing he wanted to say he's like oh those aren't everywhere in europe <laughs> we're gonna end on that note i think <laughs> of course we are <laughs> only, only go up. you're welcome all right um so next we're going to move into executive session discuss uh discussion and possible action to consider a motion to convene in executive session for the city manager's informal review personal matter pursuant to crs section 24-6-424 f i all right. So, Mr. Mayor, we need a motion. I move to convene an executive session for the city manager's informal review, a personnel matter pursuant to CRS section 24 6 402 4 FI. Second. We have a first and a second. Can we pull? Councillor Stolarczyk. Councillor Miller. Councillor Williams. Yes. Councillor Hansey. Councilor Purser? Yes. And Councilor Parrish? Yes. Motion passes 6-0. Right. Uh, why don't we, because it's 8 o'clock, why don't we take